Hello, YouTube. So apparently we're getting some more Throne and Liberty news. This is Mr. Tico Talks, and we're going to react to the future of Throne and Liberty. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruin it for you guys, but I have already watched this video off stream. Of course I did. Look how handsome this guy is. He shows up in a thumbnail. I'm going to click. He's handsome, he's cute, and I don't even care. He can read patch notes for any game, and I'll check them out. But let's see what the, it is in future, for the future of Throne and Liberty. What's up, gamers? Welcome to Tico Talks Throne and Liberty. Oh my god, of course. Throne and Liberty? I don't care. You can sell me anything, Tico. My we're gonna, we're gonna uh, go a little bit fast with this video and try to, like, mostly stop on the good bits of this. Um, like I said, I already watched this off stream, but you know, you know, maybe some of you guys don't keep up with this information, Eco, so we can we can watch it together. Globalization design manager, Amazon Games for Throne and Liberty. And I'm here to give you some updates on the game and a little peek at what's coming soon. I've been spending a ton of time in the game, having a blast with all of you. And now that we just released our Haunted Harvest yeah. Halloween update, I'm I need to log in and do this. I think um, I'm gonna log in today to do this. Even more excited. I hope everyone's had a chance to check out the event. The limited time Haunted Labyrinth yeah. is so fun, and I love seeing all the clever things people are doing with their outfits to get in the festive mood. Let's talk a bit about how things have been going and what we're planning in the coming okay, months. Okay, here we go. First, I want to give a huge thank you to the millions of players that have joined You're us welcome. so far on this journey. You're welcome. We wanted to make sure that crossplay was enabled from day one, and it's been awesome to see that in bed. And honestly, crossplay, he just mentioned crossplay. I think this is something that every game moving forward, if you're going to include console, crossplay is a must. Steam players, PlayStation players, Xbox players, any sort of player should be able to play together. This adds longevity to your game. And with how busy, um, how many uh, live service games come out and people just flip flop to this game, to that game, it's always good to have more of the population play together. It, this I can't express enough how good this is. This is good for the first descendant. This was good for um, Throne in Liberty. This is good for New World. Uh, adding this crossplay thing is, is brilliant. Investment payoff. This great community has grown so quickly in this first month, and we're just getting started. Of course, any game launch of this magnitude has lots of craziness that comes with it. We've been in constant contact with NCSoft to address player feedback, and uh -huh. we hope you've seen some of that in the last few weeks. So let's talk more about how we're moving forward. Okay. Let's start with a topic we all hate and every MMO deals with. Oh. Bots. Bots. Oh my god. I am willing to bet that over 50% of the players that are shown are bots. With the last couple of times that I've logged into this game, there is not a single zone that I go into that doesn't have a train of bots everywhere. Bots have definitely infiltrated Throne of Liberty. And I'm, I think I'm being generous by, fame, by saying 50%. There are quite a few bots in that game. The battle against bots is well underway, and I want to tell you a bit about what we're doing to attack bots on multiple fronts. First, we're continuing to improve our detection algorithms and are now running those okay. daily to ban bots as quickly as possible. Okay, okay. Second, we're attacking the areas in which bots We can do love that. We do love that. You know, it's the, man the game has been out for a month-ish, so it's good that they are showing initiative at the beginning. You know, I'm not going to name any names, but there have been companies out there that have waited a long time before they do any sort of ban waves and not enough uh, measures take into punishing the people who break these things by having, you know, whatever. let's just continue reading. But they're, I'm glad that in a month they've already doing, they're already doing this. Operate and continuing to look for ways to make it difficult for bots to do business. But we want to do that while minimizing the impact to real okay. player experience. Or destroying your game. Let's keep that in mind because, uh, you know, bots are, 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 are bad, but you don't want to destroy the beginning portion of your game that is essential and crucial for new and or returning players. So you don't want to mess too much of the uh, with the systems early on because then it's going to be hard for those people to climb. It's going to be, uh, you, you know, you're destroying your game essentially. So hopefully they find a good solution for this. We have some plans related to the auction house to impose protections to limit bots impact there. We will share okay. more on that once we are able. We can't reveal too much detail. That could be used to circumvent our safeguards. Third, we're actively actioning players who engage in RMT behavior. Okay. Participating in RMT negatively impacts several aspects of the game, including... Including your wallets over at NCSoft. Powering bot activity, compromising the hard work of players who follow the rules, and more. We will continue to action players with more severe punishments as appropriate, including okay. negative loosened balances, full auction house lock... Okay lockouts, suspensions, and bans. Okay, so everything he said before bans is dog shit to me. 
Why does somebody need a slap on the wrist? You break TOS, you should get a ban. I don't understand why we're still trying to give them negative balance. Why we're... It's not an accident. People don't RMT by accident. It is never an accident. It's never an accident. If you are an rmt -er, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. It's not an accident. You don't accidentally slip and fall into a G2G website by accident. It is, you clearly know what you're doing. You're circumventing the, the, the rules or you're going around the rules that are put before you to get um, a cheaper deals and you should be banned. This is never an accident. We have zero tolerance for this type of behavior. No, you do have tolerance. That's why you don't ban them. Zero tolerance would be permanent ban straight out the gate. The next thing I want to talk to you about is world bosses, which are garnering a lot of discussion in the community. So I want to take some time to discuss that. First, let's talk about loot drops. Many of you have been feeling that world bosses have often left you feeling disappointed yeah. because you don't feel there's a meaningful chance to acquire gear during these events. To improve this, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to increase the number of portals that appear for peace mode bosses. Okay, good. The portals okay. will be generated based on player counts, but on average, I would expect more, you to see at portals? least one more portal, portal per boss. This should help spread players out across more fights, giving more opportunity. Dude, I, I gotta stop for a moment and catch some, some, some air. He is so handsome, chat. Oh my lord. Okay, let's go back in. Opportunities to acquire drops. The second thing is we're introducing a new chest drop that has a chance to be included in your participation reward after the boss dies. Yeah. This chest will allow you to select one of any of the good. epic items the boss can drop. This is good. This is good news because often enough when you do bosses and you go to like 20, 50 bosses and you don't even get, you get nothing. That is a bad feeling. That feels disgusting. So this uh, having to choose a, a, a reward is kind of nice. Up which we hope will also give players the agency of choosing a reward that's most relevant to them. All items from this chest will be untradeable, though the non-weapon like items it. can be lithographed if the player chooses. Okay. Players can expect both of these changes to be live following our maintenance on October 31st. We've also been paying attention to the impact that the Eclipse skill is having on Peace Mode bosses occurring within Abyss Dungeon. The Eclipse um, buff. So the Eclipse buff is um, something that players can activate to turn, uh, to turn it into a PvP zone uh correct me if i'm wrong but people can use the eclipse on world bosses too to make the world bosses become a pvp uh, pvp zones i believe so um for people who did not enjoy pvp and really tried their best to stay away from pvp it you know it all it often made i guess i would imagine that it makes people feel uncomfortable don't like the situation when they're trying to go and you all willy-nilly you know comfy doing their pbe stuff and all of a sudden eclipse happens and there's pvp yeah i i can't imagine that to be a good feeling we think that this is disrupting the expected flow of gameplay for individuals attempting to participate in peace mode botches which are meant to botches hold up uh, tico i love him so much more because i know he's nervous be a pvp free experience Shit. for those players <sighs> so we're making an adjustment so that when peace mode bosses spawn in dungeons there will be an additional new portal outside the dungeon that will take players directly to the safe zone inside the dungeon this way they can enter the peace mode boss as expected okay without passing through areas that may have turned into a conflict zone due to the eclipse we skill. like that we like that this change is expected to go live in mid-november mid the eclipse skill itself will continue to change the dungeon into conflict mode as always finally for bosses there's been talk about how contribution works in relation to the loot drops later this week we will be releasing an article that defines and describes how loot distribution works across all content types okay. i want to briefly touch on this specifically for conflict That's very good. bosses with the recent change locking boss loot to the original owner for 10 minutes, some guilds have been wondering what the value of PvP is in these events. The spirit of the conflict world boss is that guilds are fighting to control the area to allow their guild to damage the boss and raise their contribution, thus increasing their chances to get better loot. In addition to increasing your own uh -huh. contribution though, you can also decrease other guilds' contribution. 
In conflict mode, you do this by killing players from rival guilds, which will reduce that player's contribution by 70% okay, each Okay, okay. So reducing another guild's contribution increases your relative contribution. So it's a major factor in determining the loot that can draw for you. We're working on introducing some contextual UI indicators of contribution amounts, and we hope that this will help guilds be more strategic about which opponents to focus their attacks on. Moving on from world bosses, I want to talk about co-op dungeons. Co-op dungeons, We've made three recent go. changes to matchmaking for dungeons. Uh-huh. To help with queue experiences, we introduced a new option to queue for a random dungeon when using party matchmaking, and we made a change to better match players based on their combat power. Okay. To better align group capabilities. That's good. To help with completion rates, we increase the damage and HP buff when queuing through matchmaking to be 10%, up from 5%. All of these changes went live on October 17th. Then, in order to improve the rate in which players can acquire their desired gear, we made another change following the Haunted Harvest Halloween update that provides a bonus reward when queuing for random dungeons. That's pretty Each nice. Each successful random dungeon completion will reward one additional dimensional soul shard and will also have a chance at a larger reward of one yeah. dimensional essence. We hope that these changes have had a meaningful impact to your experience with That's pretty nice. It's kind of like um, if you're familiar with Final Fantasy XIV, which is something that I think um, a lot of other games should um, definitely look at. In Final Fantasy XIV, you can queue up daily for missions. And if you are a, a healer, a support, or a tank, you get additional rewards. It adds incentive to play these classes. Also, by uh, playing tank, you get an exclusive mount by doing a certain amount of dungeons. I don't know if they removed that by now, but by running tank, you get an exclusive mount. By running support, you get an exclusive mount um, for doing X amount of dungeons. Um, daily, they have this like queue up as a tank or as a healer to get extra um, rewards. They have this queue up for random matches to get extra rewards. Um, this is something that I feel all games that have matchmaking should apply to their systems. That way you have more tanks, more healers, more people trying to do stuff because you get additional benefits to playing um, certain roles. Uh, I think they should do that. And I, again, I think every game should do that that has matchmaking. Um, uh, uh, given the f uh, if the difficulty is fair enough that you can even do matchmaking to begin with. Go up dungeons. We're going to keep monitoring the data, we're going to keep listening to player feedback, and we'll continue to tweak if needed. All right, let's talk now about some major systems that players may already be familiar with because okay. of their time playing on the Korean service. In particular, I want to talk about two systems. Okay, so I think some of these systems that he's going to go on about are some of the systems that were the real pay to win. Uh, I believe, I think it was the Ruin system. That was going to be, it, that didn't release for us in the West yet, but... I think those were their most pay-to-win systems, and they're finally coming to the West, or he talks about them here. Substance transformation and the rune system. And I want to be very clear here. Neither of these systems will launch in our service with their current functionality. We're working closely with NCSoft to make updates, and both systems will be improved in a way that will satisfy both Korean and global users. Okay. While not all changes are finalized, here are some things I can say for now. For the rune system, it will have at a minimum the following adjustments. First, rune slot unlocking will no longer require RNG to obtain your desired slot type. I don't even know what that means because I don't know anything about ruins, but the, the, the more we can eliminate RNG, the better it is, I would imagine. The more we can eliminate RNG from our systems, the better it is. Second, we're introducing a separate rune bag with improved searching capabilities to reduce the burden on your traditional inventory and storage, while also making it easier to find your desired runes. For substance transformation, it will at a minimum be changed so that tradable items cannot be used in the system. This means you cannot infinitely buy items from the auction house to feed the system to earn rewards. Mm -hmm. Since the amount of items that can be fed Which may th be- th This was seen as like super pay to win too. So, so they're eliminating that option where you can just buy out a bunch of the other stuff to then feed to your gear, uh, to feed to that one thing. Uh, this was seen as very pay to win in Korea, but uh, I guess they're removing that. We decrease because of this. We're evaluating the requirements of how much has to be fed into the system to gain rewards. Although we don't have any specific changes related to trait resonance at this time, this system is not planned to release in the near future and we are still actively discussing any potential adjustments for this system with NCSoft prior to its release. While we're on the topic of upcoming systems, 
I want to talk about a growing desire from our players to have- He has a wedding band! He's married! Oh my lord! The ability to engage in more structured PvP outside of the competitive large-scale options currently available no in the open world events and conquest battles. I'm happy to say this is something we've had on our radar for a while, and we're excited to bring you a new feature that will come in mid-November that will provide on-demand battle feature. I don't want to reveal too much yet, but this will allow players uh -huh. to engage in non-competitive PvP across arenas and conquest battles with varying numbers of teams and team sizes, both in public and private matches. So stay tuned for more updates about that in the coming weeks. Okay. There has been so much great feedback from everyone in the community, both positive comments and suggestions for how to improve the game. Thank you. We're really grateful that you are all this invested in helping us continue to improve the game. We're is just he, getting started, is he the community and this week, manager, on October Chad? 31st, our first player survey will open. You will be able to access it from the Silesium Notice Board in-game, and I want to really encourage you to take it. We take the results very seriously, and real actions have spawned from all of our previous surveys. We are always listening to your feedback, what is his title? whether it's through the surveys, reading your reviews on the major gaming platforms, or comments in Discord and social media. We're always using your voice to help guide our development and using it to improve the overall Throne and Liberty experience. So please keep the feedback coming. All right, that brings us to the community question. Okay. What we'd really like to know is, what would you like to see changed in Throne and Liberty? Um, uh, more PBE content. Leave your thoughts down below. Yeah, more content. Below in the comments. Please like and subscribe. That lets us know that you want more of these kinds of videos. We'll read each and every comment, so let us know what you think. I really hope this was informative. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in Silesia. More in harder dungeons, yeah. Let's, um, you know, we believe in rewarding great um, greatness, so let's give it a comment, a like, and subscribe. Good um, notes. Looking forward to many of these additions is that good okay well chat what do you guys think leave it down in the comments below and this video will be linked in the description in case you guys wanted to go back and read it without some um uh, white-haired vtuber talking about it yeah over it uh let me know if your relationship doesn't work out <laughs> wait i should yeah that should be um one of my questions right yeah let me know if your relationship doesn't work out not so fast hit that subscription button before you head out how about that